We are the Knights of Awakening. And today's episode is going to deal with the recent controversies over everything from statues to freedom of expression to punching Nazis in the nose. Because we all know somebody needs punched in the nose sometimes. I am Charles McBride, the Angry Norseman. Well, kind of more like the Disappointed Norseman at this point. I'm going to start out by letting you know why this video has come into existence at all. And part of it is because, as a businessman, as a practicing mystic, as someone who has to keep his own reputation maintained, I have to make public addresses sometimes, especially when people accuse me of things like being a neo-Nazi supporter or other shit like that. Um, I have no love for the Nazis. I don't have love for anyone who tries to wipe out a race of people or who tries to wipe out cultures or ideals in that way, or in any way for that matter. I am not happy with the political climate as it exists, but I want to hit that first. A lot of people are not going to like what I have to say, and mostly it's because children like to throw temper tantrums, and I'll hit on why I make the comparison to children later. But, before I go any further, let's hit on the statues, okay? We have Confederate statues being torn down. We have various other statues throughout the U.S. that are being threatened or defaced, including the statue of Columbus. And the problem I have with this isn't the action of the destruction of the statue. It isn't the defacement of the statue. It's the fact that it is illegal to do so to public property. Someone has to pay for that. You know who that someone is? Me! Because as a small business owner, I pay twice the taxes you do! So please, stop wasting my hard-earned money destroying shit that I have to have repaired, legally, whether I want it repaired or not. It annoys me to no end that rather than calling a city council meeting, which is very easy to do, and costs you nothing to put it on the billet for discussion, in most cities, in most counties, to have the statue removed, the people go out clandestinely like ninjas in the night. Because apparently they're too cowardly to do it in daylight. And the ones that do it in daylight don't get arrested. Or if they did, they don't get fined nearly enough. There is no reason to destroy public property in this way at this time. If we become a militant nation... If there comes a point where you no longer have the freedom of speak, the freedom to assemble, yeah, then blow the statues right off the face of the earth. Then be violent. But we're not there. And acting like this just pushes people into responding in a way that could bring us to that point. It's silly. It's stupid. And I mean that. And I don't use the word stupid very often. But when you go and you destroy public or private property that is not your own, you are violating the law. You are no better than the hate mongers that you are speaking against. You've done nothing to bring the people onto your side and everything to make us go, I wonder what the other side has to say. And the worst part is, I already know what the other side has to say, and I have nothing for them. Do you know what happens when you're a Norse in this country? Do you understand what it means to walk out there? And carry a Mjolnir where people can see it? Or to have one on your arm? Do you know what happens then? I'll tell you what happens. People look at you, they walk up to you if you've got a shaved head because you already got your hairline thinning, and a big bush of beard, and they go, Brother, I know you know what I'm talking about. Them damn, you know, whatevers, okay, racist slur over there, stealing our jobs. I had a guy do that when I worked at a grocery store. Comes up to me. And he goes, I know you know what I'm talking about. The black man is stealing our jobs. And I go, he is? Yeah, he's stealing from us. You know that. I was not wearing my work shirt. I was wearing a coat. I lived up in the northern lands where it gets cold. I ran up and down the aisles making a big show of it. I come back. As I looked all over. I didn't see any black man stealing anything. The only black guy we got in the store right now is one of our stalkers. But, and I unzipped my coat, I said, I could go check with him and see if he thinks he's stealing anything today. 
And he goes, oh, I, I didn't realize you worked here. I said, yeah, you don't realize a lot of things, and I'm not your brother. Get the hell out of my store. And the man did. So I threatened to call the police on him and have him removed because I knew that my, my team there would back me up. And they would have had I needed it, but he left. Because apparently, if you got a shaved head, suddenly you're one of them. Well, you know what? I'm tired of being grouped into that kind of group. And you know what? All these thunder skinheads who think they're Norse, I'm tired of them as well. But I am equally tired of the other side that says, we're not being heard. We need to go break shit and destroy shit so that someone will hear us. You know what? If you aren't being heard, then why would I have stood up? Why would I have done something on your behalf? I have done shows on transgender issues. And I am about as far from being transgender as you can get. I am the most CIS male on earth that you can find. And yet, I support your freedoms, your rights. And so many others like me do. But when you tell us that we don't have a right to join in the conversation, the only thing that does is make us want to very angrily go after you, not all of you, just the single person who dares in the United States of America tell us what we have a right to speak on. Now I'll tell you what, this country was founded on the right to express your opinion, and that goes right up to the point at which you're calling for violence, which I will never agree with. We have hate leaders rampaging up and down the streets. And on the one side, we've got the Nazis. We've got people that are yelling, burn them and kill them. And you know what? I think every one of those leaders should be imprisoned for a minimum of 90 days at the moment at which they say, when you see this person, show them, show them hatred and malice and hurt them at any chance you get. As soon as they call for violence, as soon as they call for discrimination, they should be imprisoned instantly. 90-day minimum. Let them wait it out for three months. That's what you do to errant children. You put them in time out. That's what you do with violent children. You put them in time out. And they are obviously children. If they have not reached a point of enlightenment at this phase in human evolution that they've got to spread that kind of hate. But it goes on the other side, too. You know what? Punch a Nazi in the nose will define what you mean by that, because a lot of people that have nothing to do with the Nazi regime are taking a whole lot of hate and a whole lot of flack, because you want to punch someone in the nose. And you should be put on timeout, too. Every single person putting up a post like that should be in jail for 90 days. You think about that. Because you know what? Freedom of speech stops where you're inciting violence against others. And when you do it on a march, when you get a group of people together and they want to go punch a Nazi in the nose, I got news for you. That phrase comes from the great old comic of Captain America. And do you know what? We were at war at the time of that comic. We were fighting a war with Germany. And there were Nazis Honest to God's Nazis, they had uniforms. And when we spoke of punching a Nazi in the nose, that meant getting on a goddamn boat, going over there, and hitting him in the nose. And actually, what it really meant was going over there with a rifle and getting shot at while you were in the mud and the dirt and wondering if you were going to die and try to kill them. Because you don't agree with what they stand for. Because what they're doing to other human beings is wrong and someone had to do something about it. That's the difference between where we're at now and where we were at then. And if you can't figure that out, then obviously you don't have the intellect to be watching this video or any others that I'm going to be doing in the future. This is not World War II, children. This is the United States of America where I have the freedom to get up and speak like this, so long as I am not inciting violence. And you have the freedom to get up and speak like this, in any tone you choose, just so long as you're not inciting violence. But as soon as you start to gather a group of people to go out and do harm onto another, you have crossed a desperate line as to what is acceptable in this good nation. 
I am Norse. I am pagan, living in the Bible Belt. You think I don't know what it means to be discriminated against? I went to file my small business license. I had to go through the paperwork for that in a small town. And you know what hit? Lady looks at me and she goes, well, what do you do? And I said, well, we sell oils and incenses. We do some tarot card readings. And I have to make a note of that because legally, that is a service. It is a service. And as it is a service, it cannot be taxed in the state that I reside in. And she looks at me and she goes, what? What are tarot readings? What do you mean read cards? I said, it's like... Well, like, like psychic services, palm reading, she goes, Oh, Lordy! We don't have that around here! And wouldn't meet my eye after that. And I felt a boiling anger of hurt and pain in my breast at that moment. I felt like I was being tret inhuman for what I do, what I believe in. And you know what? I swallowed that pain. I didn't say anything mean to that woman. I didn't jump her. And up till now... I didn't even say anything about it on a show, and this was weeks ago. Weeks ago. Because it wasn't relevant. Because it doesn't matter. She has a right to be afraid and to be hurt. And maybe if she sees one good pagan who is kind and friendly and jovial and nice, she'll know that the rest of us are too, or at least some of us. But it hurt, and I know what that pain feels like. And yeah... Did I want to take this person and lift them into the air and body slam them on the ground in front of me and start beating them? Did I want to? Not really. Um, I don't like fighting weak people. Did I get so angry that I wanted to express my anger and cause that person hurt in return? Yes. Yes, I did. And I chose not to. Because I'm evolved. Because I walk on two goddamn legs. You have a choice as to how you deal with hate. You can meet hate with hate. You can meet violence with violence. Or you can choose a better road. Adults, rational people, choose a better road. Children meet anger with violence. They get upset and they throw a tantrum. And then they hit someone or they break something. Anyone who's had a child, anyone who's babysat a child, Seen them play a video game. They get angry that the game isn't going their way, and they throw the controller against the wall. You know, I think maybe that's where the society has failed. There was a time when if your child did that, it would be the end of their world. They would have no more video games to play. But now we're like, well, we'll just buy you a new one because, you know, it's not fair that you should go without. No! They break something, it should be gone. Melt that sucker down into lead. Melt it down into a little block like that and let them play with the block. But I digress. This isn't going to be about parenting. I think that is where some of it stems. That people do not instill the proper value. But that's also because most of the people I know who have kids instill those proper values. And I don't see the controllers flap against the walls because the kids know better. Going to move on to uh, the counter argument that I see. Well, if we're going to take down this statue, let's take down this other one, the Martin Luther King one, because he hated gay people. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Do a little research. Do a little research. That is based off of an interview. Not really an interview. It was actually a column in which he was replying to a question from someone who was gay. During a time when the social and psychological standards treat it as an illness. And there was no reason for him to know better. There was no system in place for him to learn. Think about that. However, his efforts at nonviolent resistance and acceptance of all peoples, and the fact that his recommendation to the person was, of all things, treatment, not that they be burned alive at the stake and all this other stuff, he didn't approach them with any form of hate. He approached them from what was the clinical psychology of the time, and yes, it was wrong, and sadly, yes, it's still on file to that day in clinical psychology methods, and it's still wrong. So maybe we should be fighting that first. But he approached it from that. He didn't show any form of hate, any form of aggression towards this person. He embraced what they were going through with compassion in the only way he had to do so. Do some research. Find the article. Read it. 
All you gotta do is look up as Martin Luther King Jr. a racist. Duh. Good gods, do people, if they lost the ability to use their search engines, can't you use Google? Gods, damn it. It fills me with rage that is not going to cause me to go out and hit someone in the nose. It's not. You're going to get me mad. You're going to have to hear my point of view, especially if I'm going to be called a neo-Nazi supporter. Yeah, you're going to have to hear me then. You're going to have to hear me loud, and everywhere you go, you're going to have to hear me, because I will not be grouped in with those belligerent savages that took my culture and twisted the symbolism of it towards their hate engine. And let's not just dig into the past. Because if we're going to dig into the past, let's dig all the God's damn way. My people raped, butchered, murdered thousands upon thousands of people. We were the most violent individuals on in the history of the nation. World. See, I'm so angry I'm messing my words up. History of the world. We were the most violent and aggressive people. When we ran out of people to kill, we invented new technologies to take us to new lands so we could kill more people. We were bloodthirsty on a level you cannot begin to imagine. And I would hate to be judged by that. By the same token, the Christians who supplanted us wiped out our peaceful villages. They wiped out the places of peace and prosperity and happiness that we did have that were not part of our invading forces with the same amount of remorse as we had. You go back in history and what you find out is that people, up until very recently, were not that nice and not that good. So you cannot hold accountability to the individuals for the actions of their race, for the actions of their people and their cultures in the past. If you hold accountability to that, I assure you, you go back far enough and I will find something your people did. Probably to mine. So don't go there. It doesn't work. It makes you look stupid. And that's maybe the biggest problem I have. I do not encourage stupidity and ignorance in this world. <sighs> there is a proper time for violence. And as much as you might think that this is the proper time, I am impassioned. But I am nowhere near violent. If each of you that are making these claims and yelling all this, came up to me today and said, well, Charles, if you feel that way, you want to hit me in the nose? I'd be like, what do you mean, like, with gloves and sparring? Because I usually reserve that for people I actually like. I wouldn't want to be violent as I boxed with you. That may be hard for you to understand, but it's very simple. I go into a sparring match, I'm looking to better myself and better the other person. If I'm doing that with you, I probably love you on some level. You're probably like a brother or a sister to me. I'm going in there with the intent to hurt you. I probably don't want gloves to begin with. And I probably don't want you to wear them either. So, no, I don't want to box you at that point, And I don't want to fist fight you. See, that's the funny thing. You may be getting me angry, but you're not getting me violent. All you're doing is reminding me that I can be better. That the world can be better. And that someone just has to remind the world to be better. So that's what I'm doing. I'm reminding the world that you can be better. You can do more. You don't have to go this road. The proper time for violence is in self-defense or the defense of another. Defense against violence. And violence is any form of violence, be it assault or rape or any form of battery. But not verbal. Someone gets up there and they say that they hate all gays or they hate all Jews or they hate all straight people. They hate all Norse pagans. I've heard that one enough. That's fine. They're allowed to say that they hate. And they can even give their reasons why. You know, we'll all jump in the same group, except for, I guess, the straight people, which I'm a straight person, but I'll jump in the group too because I'm Norse pagan. You know, I'm an abomination to God. Okay. You're God. Sure, whatever. I don't have to agree and I don't have to like it. And you can even treat me a little differently. 
Don't discriminate against me on a job. Don't discriminate against me on services that are rendered in a standard way. So if you're selling goods, you need to sell to me at the same price you sell to everyone else. If it's a custom service, I would accept you refusing, yes, to draw my Mjolnir on your cake because you're Christian. I, I get that. That's fair. I would not want to impose my symbol upon you. I'll find someone who will draw the Mjolnir and it won't hurt their feelings. My money will be good somewhere else. You will suffer for it. I'll make sure you get boycotted, but that's my response. And that's, that's the way of the world. And it's a wonderful system. I don't need to take anybody's head and slam it through a cake because they won't put a Mjolnir on it. I certainly don't need to punch anyone in the nose. Not over that. There are a lot of people in this world who have earned a punch in the nose from me far and wide. If only I had more time to throw punches. But alas, I have other things to do in my life. But generally speaking, they're not people that are expressing words or gathering peacefully. Now, if they're gathering unpeacefully, have they earned a punch in the nose? Well, the question is, are they moving to hurt someone? If they are storming into someone's house to cause harm, it's knuckle time. But if they're simply assembling and they're discussing how much they hate this one group, and no one has called for violence and no one is issuing violence or encouraging violent action, no, because another group can assemble right next door to them and then they get to see. And maybe if both groups see each other standing there, not throwing things, not hitting each other, not getting violent, maybe they'll realize that the people in the other group are humans too. Maybe they'll say they're not that different from me. And maybe, maybe we'll reach some kind of understanding. Children throw tantrums. They destroy property. They hit other children because they don't agree with them for what they say. Adults use violence only when there is no other recourse. It is a mark of our civilization, of our society. It is the evolution of my culture and your culture and all of our shared cultures that have come together in this great mixing pot. We learned a basic truth that one need not strike another over words. They need not kill another over a difference of opinion. I have seen people call for a hatred of everyone who voted for Donald Trump or everyone who voted for Hillary Clinton or what have you. I got bad news for you. You'll be surprised. I voted for Clinton. I chose what I felt was the lesser of two evils. Lesser of two evils, which saddens me. Because if Cthulhu had been on the ballot, I'd have voted for him. I'd been a little bit lesser of evils. However, many of my dear and close friends voted for Trump. And they had their own reasons. Some of them very good reasons. Some of them situations where they felt this topic, whatever the topic was, that he had power over as president, was more important than the other topics where he's a figurehead. And I felt his position as a figurehead meant more than his power in office since his power is regulated so much by Congress. And we've, we've talked about it and debated it and agreed to disagree while learning something from each other's points of view. Because that's what adults do. We don't try to bully each other. We don't try to destroy each other. We certainly don't wipe out each other's property or punch each other in the nose. If this was World War II, I would agree with punching a Nazi in the nose, because we were at war. Are we at war now? Are you ready to fight and die? Have you ever held a gun? Have you ever been shot at? Ask yourself these questions, because as you escalate the level of violence, eventually it will reach that point, and then those Nazis that are sitting there talking will probably pick up guns and start shooting at you and likely me, because they will have a justified reason after you've stabbed their best friend or killed their best friend by hitting them in the nose. And guess what? That can kill someone. Well, that's something that's really easy to recover from. Yeah, if you fall right. There's a reason why we wear headgear and sparring. There's a reason we have mouth guards and gloves. But fools don't learn. And I'm sure that while this will reach a few people, it won't reach enough. 
And someday someone out there is going to hit someone else, and that person's going to fall, and they're going to die. And then they won't need any more reasons to hate you, because their best friend will be dead. They'll have all the reasons they need then. Because after one person dies from it, that's all the reasons they need. Hell, you're still fighting a battle that was won. Hundreds of thousands of good men and women died already to fight a war that we won. And you're still caught in that battle. So someone's going to go out there and they're going to punch a Nazi in the nose. It won't even be someone who's a Nazi. It'll be someone who went to the rally to hear what had to be said because they were curious because the other side told them how evil they were, how terrible it was that they had an opinion. Someone will get hit in the nose, and they'll fall. They'll hit their head wrong. They'll die. Then all of their friends will have all the reason they need to shoot and kill every member of whatever special interest group that was. And then as more people die, they'll have more reasons. They'll have all the reasons they need on both sides. And that's how war starts. That's how the war in the U.S. is going to begin. Because children acting like children. And it breaks my heart. That's what I have to say. I'm not a neo-Nazi. I don't agree with the Nazi ideals. I love all men and women equally as brothers and sisters. I love all of humanity equally, all religions and races and creeds, and that's after all of the pain that I have been through and all the hurt that I've taken in. And even when I hate, I still love. Because that's what you have to do. Because it's the only anti-venom to the poison racing through the veins of my home. This is Charles McBride, a real American, signing off. Awaken the night within.